from the series Introduction to Medical Device Regulation, Usability Engineering in the Medical Device Industry in the European Union, Responsibilities and Obligations Focusing on the MDR and IEC 623661. Welcome to this web-based training. Here, we will summarize the main responsibilities for the implementation of usability engineering in the medical device industry in the EU. Why is usability so important? Well, in the past, medical devices used to be simpler and relatively safer. But with the growth in complexity and functionality of medical devices, their effectiveness and potential for harm has also grown. As complexity has increased, so has the demand for qualified operators and exact product specifications. In the development of medical devices, technology has also been at the core of the product. Aspects such as usability, accessibility and user experience have often been considered secondary. Nowadays, usability is considered one of the major causes of failure in medical devices, and it is attributed to the design of a medical device without taking into account the risks to the patient and their health. In particular, risks related to the correct use of the device. Similarly, new regulations and obligations for manufacturers have been created to guide them in producing products in which the risks of use is minimized. So, what is usability? In a very generic way, usability can be described as the user experience. It is the positive perceptions and reactions that arise from the actual or expected use of a system and from interaction with the organization offering it. The goal of usability is accessibility, so that the widest possible group of people can use the product in relation to their abilities by always having in mind the mitigation of adverse impact on themselves or the manufacturer of the product, including risks to the economy, human life, health and the environment. It means to always be focused on the final intended users so that they can achieve defined goals in terms of effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction. We will now look at what the Medical Device Regulation states about usability. In Chapter 1, Article 2, the MDR precisely defines the actors involved in using the product. It defines the user as any healthcare professional or layperson who uses a device. And a layperson is defined as an individual who does not have any formal education in a relevant field of healthcare or medical discipline. It also describes a device deficiency as any inadequacy in the identity, quality, durability, reliability, safety or performance of an investigational device, including malfunction, use errors or inadequacy in information supplied by the manufacturer. And defines an incident as any malfunction or deterioration in the characteristics or performance of a device made available on the market, including use error due to economic features, as well as any inadequacy in the information supplied by the manufacturer and any undesirable side effect. For a manufacturer to be compliant with the general safety and performance requirements of the MDR, they need to address usability. Annex 1, Chapter 1, Section 1 states, Devices shall achieve the performance intended by their manufacturer and shall be designed and manufactured in such a way that, during normal conditions of use, that they are suitable for their intended purpose. They shall be safe and effective, and shall not compromise the clinical condition or the safety of the patients. Section 3 of the same annex states that manufacturers shall establish, implement, document and maintain a risk management system 
that estimates and evaluates the risks associated with the device and could occur during the intended use and also during reasonably foreseeable misuse. And Section 5 states, in eliminating or reducing risks related to use error, the manufacturer shall reduce as far as possible the risks related to the economic features of the device and the environment in which the device is intended to be used, and give consideration to the technical knowledge, experience, education, training, and use environment where applicable, and the medical and physical conditions of intended users. Moving on to the usability requirements regarding the design and manufacture of a product. Annex 1, Chapter 2 of the MDR states that particular attention must be paid to the construction of devices and interaction with their environment, such as protection against the risks posed to the patient or user by devices supplying energy or substances and also protection against the risks posed by medical devices intended by the manufacturer for use by laypersons. Annex 1, Chapter 3 of the MDR then speaks to the requirements regarding the information supplied with the device, and it describes how labels and instructions for use should be written. Please note, relevant sections are written in brackets. By looking at the state of the art of European standards related to usability of medical devices, particular attention should be paid to the standard IEC 62366-1. The first part of the standard is dedicated to the usability engineering process, and the second part is a technical report that guides the manufacturer on the practical application, methods and analysis of the usability engineering process for medical devices. We will describe now the first part of the standard. Relevant sections of its paragraphs are written in brackets. The user's interaction with the device can lead to potentially dangerous situations related to its use. When a device is used according to its instructions, this is called normal use. An error in use occurs when the action or non-action of the user leads to a different intended result. The use error is unintentionally caused by the user, but when the user deliberately violates the normal use of the device, this is called abnormal use. Finally, the absence of use errors is called correct use of the device. The usability engineering process is closely linked to the risk analysis process described by the standard ISO 14971. In fact, it allows the manufacturer to evaluate and reduce the risks associated with use errors and correct use of a device. In the context of abnormal use, the process can be used to identify risks, but not to assess or reduce them. It is well illustrated here that the scope of ISO 14971 includes the full scope of IEC 62366-1. As written in the general requirements of this standard, the manufacturer shall establish, document and maintain a usability engineering process to provide safety for the patient. This process shall address user interaction with the medical devices according to the accompanying documentation, including but not limited to transport, storage, installation, operation, maintenance, repair and disposal of the device. The level of effort and the choice of methods and tools used to perform the usability engineering process depend very much on the device and may vary based on the severity of harm associated with the use, the use specification, and the size and complexity of the user interface. The user interface is the means by which the user interacts with the device. 
These include physical, visual and auditory interfaces, as well as displays and software interfaces. The accompanying documentation, such as the user manual, is considered to be part of the medical device and its user interface. For the application of the usability engineering process, the manufacturer of the medical device must first define a summary of the important characteristics related to the context of use of the medical device called use specification. This includes important information on the use environment as well as the intended user profile like age, demographic traits and job requirements. The manufacturer shall then identify potential hazards and hazardous situations as well as the user interface characteristics related to safety and the potential use errors. This analysis is used as an input for defining the requirements of the user interface. From this point on, an iterative process begins where the user interface is continuously defined, designed, implemented and tested through the formative evaluation. The goal of the formative evaluation is to demonstrate that a good design was implemented from a usability point of view. During this evaluation, new hazard-related use scenarios may be identified and this can lead to the redefinition of the use specifications and or new design solutions. Before the device is placed on the market, the manufacturer selects hazard-related use scenarios of the designed user interface to be tested and evaluated with representative users and tasks designed to measure the effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction of the complete product. This is called summative evaluation. Formative and summative evaluation shall be documented in respective plans where the manufacturer specify the protocol of the tests and document the results in specific reports. The overall result of the usability engineering process shall be stored in the usability engineering file. Common methods used to perform the formative and summative evaluation are well described in part two of the 62366 standard. After these steps, if the device can be defined as acceptably safe from the point of view of usability, it can then be placed on the market. The identification of risks associated with use does not end there, however as it is part of the life cycle process of a medical device. The monitoring of these risks is achieved through after-sales surveillance processes, also called post-market surveillance, or PMS for short. For further information on the PMS process, please see the video Post-Market Surveillance for Medical Device Industries in the EU. We would like to thank you for your attention and also acknowledge the continuing support of EIT Health and the FAU Innovation Fund. More information on the Certificate Course Medical Device Regulation offered by the Friedrich Alexander University Erlangen-Nürnberg can be found on the homepage of the Central Institute of Medical Engineering at www.zimt.fau.eu.